Okay, so we're in journal 18 here, and what it's asking you to do for the bell work is given a equation, y equals sine x. So this equation has trig functions in it. And what it wants you to do is to fill out the table. So I've chosen some x values for you to plug into um, the function. So these are the x, they'll go in for x, and then you have to find y. Um, so I also placed a unit circle here. If you're taking notes and putting this in your journal, you don't need to draw the unit circle just because um, most of you guys have a unit circle with you. I just drew one so that way I can talk to you using it. So like these problems here, if you were just to set it up, I'm going to plug in zero for sine and figure out what that value would be. And then I would do that for the other ones. I'd plug in pi over six to the next one, sine pi over four, sine pi over three, and sine pi over two. So all I'm doing right now is just setting it up so I can figure out what is my function when I plug in my x value. So sine of zero on the unit circle is right here. And so sine is your um, y values, right? So these are your y values where it cosines your x value. So in this case, at zero, um, this zero I'm referring to, when the radian is zero, the y value is zero. So sine is zero here. At pi of six, sine is one half for the y value. And that's gonna be one half. When sine's pi over four, it's the square root of two over two. When sine is pi over three, it's gonna be the square root of three over two. And when sine is pi over 2, which is right here, sine is 1. So now looking at this here, I have my values, okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to take these x and y values. And x and y values, when they're paired like this, they are just coordinates, right? Like in this case, if you had a corresponding coordinate x, the corresponding coordinate for x would be this y value, which is 0. So our coordinate here is technically like 0, 0 that we need to plot. This one's like pi over 6 and 1 half. We have also pi over 4 and square root of 2 over 2. Um, but before we actually get into this, actually, let me erase those values for now. So, <clears throat> so we're going to plot these coordinates here, but it might be helpful to change some of these values, these weird fractions, into decimals when we're graphing. It just makes it easier to graph when you know the decimal value, so that way you can know how much to move up or down on the grid. So one half as a decimal is just 0 0.5. If you take the square root of 2 over uh, 2, that's going to be 0 0.71. I'm just going to round to two decimal places. Square root of 3 over 2 is about 0 0.87. And so now I'm going to graph this. So... What I like to do first is figure out how do I draw a graph that has um, x values that are radians. Let's talk about that. So I'm just going to draw a regular uh, coordinate system. We're going from 0, because 0 is the lowest x value, to pi over 2. So I'm going to make the furthest one here pi over 2. If I want to place, it looks like, you know, um, these values here, let's think about it. If I were to just take half of pi over 2, think about it. If this is pi over 2, half of pi over 2 is pi over 4 on the unit circle. So this half here is pi over 4. Notice how the unit circle between 0 and pi over 4 is pi over 6. So I know pi over 6 comes between 0 and 4. And then after pi over 4, it's pi over 3. So pi over 3 is between pi over 2 and pi over 4. All right, so now that I have my x values plotted, now I'm going to look at my y values. It looks like my y values go from 0 to 1. So maybe I'll make this 1. Okay, so now my axis is to scale. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to plot these coordinates. So it's at 0, 0 first. So 0, 0 is at the origin. And then pi over 6 is 0.5. So that's about the halfway point, say right about there. <clears throat> 
And then pi over 4 is 0 0.71, which is a tiny bit higher. And then pi over 3 is 80, 0.87. So that's a little bit higher than the last one. Until you get to 1 pi over 2, which is 1. So at 1, that's about right there. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is connect the dots, and you'll notice when I connect the dots, it kind of curves, like it curves the, um, the, the line. So um, since we have a curve, just keep that in mind when we're graphing the uh, sine graph. But here's the thing, this graph, even though we've graphed sine, this is not the complete graph, because we only went from 0 to pi over 2. Um, if we want a complete graph, then we need to make one full revolution, and so... Uh, we need to go f uh, try out some other angles here so that we get the full picture. So right now, we're only seeing one-fourth of the picture. So let's go to the next slide to figure out what sine really looks like. All right, so here's sine equation again. And this time, we're really going to see what sine looks like on a graph. What I'm going to do here is pick out some x values. So I like to choose zero first, okay? And... um. If I were to make one full revolution around the circle, one full circle is 2 pi. When you go all around the unit circle, you get back to 2 pi. So I'm going to make my last number here 2 pi. And so in this case, to make this a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to try to pick x values every 90 degrees. So from 0, 90 degrees is pi over 2. Another 90 degrees would be pi. And then another 90 degrees would be 3 pi over 2. And then another 90 degrees, you're back to 2 pi. So in this case, I'm, I basically made all of my angles uh, increase by pi over 2 every time. And so now what I have to do is plug these x values in, just like I did last time, and find my y values. So I'm going to set this up first. Some of these values we probably already got before. So remember, sine is talking about the y values. Ooh, sorry, that should say pi. Okay, so looking at this here, sine of zero is zero. Sine of pi over 2, well, here's pi over 2. It's 1, because the y here is 1. Oh, sorry, I meant to write 0, and I wrote 1 on the first one. My bad. Um, and then pi here, uh, sine of pi would be this 0 here. And then when we have 3 pi over 2, that's right here. And sine is the y value, so negative 1. And then when we get back to 2 pi, sine is 0. And so now we have our coordinates. Um, so let's go ahead and plot those. Let's shrink this down just a little bit. There we go. And try to draw a bigger graph here. Okay, so my x values here are going from 0 to 2 pi. So if I make this one 0 and over here 2 pi, if I cut it in half, I would have a pi. If I cut a pi a half, I would be pi over 2. If I cut this here, right, this is going to be my 3 pi over 2. And so let's also scale our y-axis. So that was just our x-axis. And let's actually, let's practice that cutting. So if I were to go the negative side, you would have negative 2 pi. If you cut that in half, that's negative pi. If you cut that in half again, that's negative pi over 2. If you cut it between negative 2 pi and pi, this would be negative pi over 2. And so that's your x values. Let's scale, scale our y values. So it looks like our lowest y value is negative 1. So I'm going to make sure that it's on here, negative 1. And then our highest y value looks like it's 1. So I'll make sure I put a 1 up here. And so our first coordinate is 0, 0, so the origin. 
And then at pi over 2, it's 1. So I'm going to curve that because I remember last time when I graphed the, um, so in the previous slide when you connected the dots, you noticed it was a very much a curved shape. And then at pi, it's 0. So this is back to 0 here. And then at 3 pi over 2, it's at negative 1. So it dips really far down. Do that again. There we go. And then at 2 pi, it's back to 0. So this sine curve swings back on up. It almost looks like kind of like an S, right? Um, a weird looking S. But this here is your typical sine graph. It starts at the origin. And then when it gets to 2 pi, it's back at uh, y equals 0. So here's the thing. Um, when you have this function here, that's one cycle, you can actually extend this further. So if I were to do the negative side, notice how like negative pi over 2 would be moving clockwise on the unit circle. So negative pi over 2 would be this value, which would be at negative 1. Let me plot that. That would be a negative 1. And then I would draw my curve. And then at p negative pi, will that be hitting it here at pi, which is 0. So this goes back to 0. And then you guys could probably predict that because we went down then back up, we're probably going to go back up and swing over. But just in case you don't see it, so negative 3 pi, if you were to go clockwise, you would land here at pi over 2, and so that's 1. So right about there. And then at 2 pi, it does come back to 0 for y value. Oops. And so there we have it. We have our sine graph. So we have a sine graph here. And by the way, these curves continue on forever and ever. So they never really stop going left or right. But it does look like here our maximum looks like it's at 1, and our minimum is at negative 1. All right, let's take a look at cosine now. So again, we're going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to pick the same x value since that was the easiest. So I'm going to go from 0 to 2 pi and a half a pi every time. There we go. So I need to figure out what cosine of 0 is, cosine of pi over 2, and cosine of pi Okay, so cosine of 0 on the unit circle, let's take a look. So here's 0. Cosine would be 1. Uh, when cosine is pi over 2, that's going to be 0. Let me grab my blue marker. So we grabbed this value. Now we're going to grab 0 when it pi is over 2. And so that's going to bring us to 0 here. Pi is right down here and looks like the y value is 0 as well. Oh, sorry, that's not 0. Um, so the, the x value here is negative 1. So at pi, cosine of pi, it's negative 1. And when cosine is 3 pi over 2, um, cosine is 0. And then cosine 2 pi is back to um, so when you get to 2 pi, our cosine value is 1. So it goes back to 1. All right, so now when we graph this, let me shrink this down just a little bit. Remember that the table here are just our coordinate points. So looking at this here, we have 0. I'm going to go ahead and number it like I did before. So this would be 2 pi. This would be negative 2 pi. Probably not doing this to scale, but that's OK. So I'm going to half it. All right. 
And then this side here, if you were to do the same thing, be negative, this will be negative pi over 2. And this would be 3 pi over 2 negative. And so looking at this here, um, at 0, oh, actually I haven't scaled my y values. Let's do that. So our lowest y value here is negative 1. Our highest looks like it's at 1. So I'm going to scale that. Okay, so at 0, it looks like my y value is 1. So it looks like I start up here. Okay. At pi over 2, cosine is 0. So that's going to be down, back down to here. And then at pi, when cosine is pi, it's negative 1. So that's going to be down here, more likely. Let me scoot that over just a little bit. And so looking at pi over 3, for pi over 3, that's 0. And then when we get back to pi over 2, this is going to be 1. And so now I'm ready to connect the dots. Notice when I connect the dots, what type of shape do I make? It looks kind of like a U, right? So you have this like U looking shape graph, or it looks kind of like an upside down bell in a way. So cosine graphs basically at zero, they start at one and then they're going to move along. Um, so that's it for this journal. Next time, I'll, in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, different types of shifts, specifically on finding the amplitude and finding the vertical shift.